Historical Preservation League and for the wonderful work that you do in terms of the preservation of our ancestors' right, right. resting place. Yes, yes. Uh, let's thank God again for Reverend A. Ray Barnett, Amen. founder and CEO. Thank again, Reverend Mark Proctor, uh, for your leadership as chairman of the board. And I want to ditto what you said uh, when you referenced how did I get here? <laughs> and uh, when my staff gave me this moment of invite, that certainly. It's been the question, how did I get here? Uh, but certainly I'm honored to be here, and uh, I know how I got here now. In fact, on my way here, Dr. Ricky Rush called me to see if I was going to be here, and I said, I'm supposed to be there, and so I will be there. And he said, yeah, I was trying to figure out how you ended up here too. He said, but I'll be across the street doing Monday school. I said, well, bless the name of the Lord. Thank you for opening your doors, Dr. Ricky Rush. Amen. Amen. And then to Pastor Stapleton, my dear friend and brother, thank you for those words you have lifted in song. I want to thank our choir and members of our church for being here tonight. Pastor C.L. Taylor, who's with us on um, tonight. And uh, some of these folks can make it up these stairs a little easier and quicker than the rest of us. Uh, but I finally made my way up here. And as I kept hearing everybody say they 56, 57, 58, I said, Oh, I don't feel bad. I'm in good company of folk who can't make it up these stairs. <laughs> Amen. But certainly we're glad to be here. And, uh, Red Pope, thank you for what you shared. Thank you, Deacon Ingram, for driving the bus on tonight. And uh, it is, um, yeah, late, and so I'm going to share a brief message on tonight. Uh, for school is waiting on some and work for others, and so we want to see you through and see you on your way. Uh, the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 13. The book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 13. Mordecai sent this reply to Esther. Don't think for a moment that because you're in the palace, you will escape when all other Jews are killed. Mm. If you keep quiet at a time like this, yeah. deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place, but you and your relatives will die. Mm. Who knows that perhaps you were made queen for just such a time as this. Yeah. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. Yeah, yeah. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. So Mordecai went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. Amen. Amen. Tonight I want to talk from the subject, believe in something. Believe in something. All right. Two summers ago, former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick took a knee during the singing of the national anthem in protest against racism and oppression plaguing the black community in the United States. That I am not going to stand up to show pride in a flag 
for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. Since then, the athlete has been both lauded and criticized for his powerful statement and without a job in the league for over a year. And while many companies would run from such a polarizing figure like Kaepernick, Nike's doubled down on its relationship, offering the activists a new multi-year deal and making him the face of the brand's Just Do It 30th anniversary campaign. Amen. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Reads the text over a black and white portrait of Kaepernick according to the New York Times. I want to suggest to you that Nike is not the first one to talk about believing in something. Yeah, yeah. So we celebrate this 90th birthday of the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh -huh. He said that if a man has not found something, uh -huh. he's willing to die for it. All right now. Yes, then he's not fit to live. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. My brothers and sisters, we've got to learn how to believe in something. Right, right. All my brothers and sisters, it has been said that if a man will not stand for something, he will fall for anything. And I want to challenge us to learn how to stand for something. Oh, my brothers and sisters, can I pause right here and say something? Recently, number 45 said that he's thinking about pardoning Muhammad Ali in the future. But Muhammad Ali's attorney quickly responded by saying that Muhammad Ali does not need to be pardoned because the government has already granted him clemency. But here's the question, how is it that number 45 can celebrate Muhammad Ali as an athlete on one hand and condemn other athletes on the other hand while at the same time dodging the draft five times and yet question other people's patriotism? As I thought about this, I came to realize that as for Kaepernick, the quarterback has continued to work as an activist for racial injustice since he found himself out of the NFL. In fact, last October he filed a grievance of collusion against the NFL owners arguing that he was being blackballed from the league because of his protest. And last month we realized that an arbitrator rejected the NFL's request to dismiss the grievance and the case is set to proceed to trial. Uh, today, I, I, I'm not focused on what does kneeling during the national anthem mean in terms of the flag or the military or any other reason, but I will say that as citizens, of these so-called United States of America. All right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have certain constitutional rights which do include burning the flag, freedom of speech. And as a prophet, I want to challenge us to consider what positive motivations that we can gain from all these discussions about kneeling during the national anthem and what it means, believing in something even if it means sacrificing everything. Yes. I believe as with the prophets of the Old Testament, there's a need to speak up and speak out concerning the times in which we live. The prophets of old times, they were responsible to speak concerning the issues of righteousness and how we relate to one another. The prophets spoke up and spoke out concerning wickedness and the ways of mankind as they represented the kingdom of God. Therefore, there has always been and will always be the need for a prophet. Uh, 
the need for someone to hear uh, the voice of the prophet, the need to articulate the times in which we live. God used the prophet by the name of Nathan to speak to King David about his life. Jesus spoke out concerning King Agrippa, King Herod, Caesar the emperor. There is always a need for a word concerning the times in which we live. The late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a prophet in his day and time, and he spoke out against the social injustice and man's inhumanity to mankind. He spoke up to a president by the name of Lyndon Bain Johnson and declared the rights of poor people. Yes. And during the homegoing celebration of the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, it was brought out how she was not just an artist singing songs of the soul, but she was also an activist for civil rights. It was said that Aretha Franklin and Frank Sinatra performed together and did seven concerts to provide funds for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement to help underwrite the payroll of the movement. It was expressed that Aretha Franklin continued to hold people accountable to make a difference throughout yeah. their life and upon uh, the world in which we live, yes, even yes, until the time of her death. Yes, Judge Greg Mathis said that Aretha Franklin said to him, Greg, how are you going to use your platform to make a difference? And he responded by saying, I'm just a TV judge. What do you mean? And Aretha explained that you have a platform and that is TV and, and you need to use it to help the people in Flint, Michigan with the water contamination. And therefore, he said he went to Flint and used his platform to bring the cameras of the world to Flint and to draw attention to the crisis. Right? Yes, yes. He said, and even a few days prior to Aretha's passing, she called him once again and said, Judge Matthews, what are you going to do about Flint? Because there's still a crisis. He said, I made a commitment that I'm going back. Yes, sir. Because she taught me I got to use my platform. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. NBA basketball star Isaiah Thomas said at Aretha's funeral that when he came to Detroit to play ball, that Aretha met him and asked him, how are you going to use your platform to make a difference? Well, and I want to suggest to each and every one of us, we've got a platform. Yes, sir. We've got to learn how to use our platform to make a difference. And I text Mordecai said to Esther, his cousin, whom he had raised as his own daughter because of the death of both of her parents. Yes, How are you going to use your platform yes, yes, yes. to make a difference? Right. A wicked and wealthy man by the name of Haman has paid off the king to get the right to slay all the Jews and now he's a threat to our survival and we are facing systemic racism and abuse by the government and those in power. At first, Esther said that she cannot go before the king and make an appeal for the Jews. But Mordecai reminded her that she was a Jew and her family is at risk too. Yes, sir. I want you to know you can't play it safe. All right. Esther finally concludes, if I must die, I must die. And so the text is tailored to teach us some lessons about how to handle our platform. Yes, sir. The prophet yes, sir. Isaiah said it in Isaiah 61, verse 1, he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, to the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in time to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, yes, yes. the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord, that he might be glorified. My brothers and sisters, 
we have a responsibility. Yes, sir. Right. 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 Jesus right. said, when I was hungry, yes. you gave me eat, I was thirsty. Yes. And you gave me drink, I was a stranger. You took me in naked and you told me I was sick. And you visited me, I was in prison. And you came unto me. Yes, sir. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee, a thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in a naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Yes, and the king yes, shall answer and say unto them, There I say unto you, oh. inasmuch right. as you've done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, yes, you have done it unto me. Yes. Therefore, we got to recognize the significance of the platform. Uh -huh. Recognize the significance of the platform that we all may not have the same platform, but God's given all of us an audience. He's given all of us a platform. And be it whether it's in a classroom, or whether it's on a street corner, or whether it's in a, a, a pulpit, or, or, or even on your job, use your platform. Uh -huh. To make a difference. Yeah. Esther, you cannot afford to sit back and play it safe. Esther, you are a Jew also. Esther, you know better than anyone else. You're not better than the rest of us. Esther, you're no different than us. Um, all right. okay, Esther had position. She was the queen. Uh -huh. Esther had prestige. She was in the palace. But then Esther had privilege. She had power. But in reality, she was reminded that God hasn't given you all of that all right. for you not to use it. All right. Number two, remember the stewardship of your platform. Really? That whatever God's given you, he expects you to use it for yes. his glory and for his honor. Yes. Not just for you, but for the benefit of somebody else. Yes. Esther, you did not get to your position on your own. Mordecai, your cousin, recommended you to the king, and you became a queen. Yes, sir. And I need to tell you that we all stand on the shoulders of somebody else. That's right. That none of us got to where we are by ourselves. That's but right. somebody has helped us along the way. Yes, sir. Nobody can afford to say, I picked myself up by my own bootstraps. But the question yes, is, who gave you the boots and who gave you the straps? That's right. Somebody has helped us yes, along the way. Yes. And therefore, we've got to learn how to pay it forward and learn how to reach back and be a blessing to somebody else. Right, amen. Our platforms are not for selfishness. Amen. Life is bigger than me, myself, and I. Amen. But our platforms are for sharing. That when God opens a door for us, we must open a door for someone else. Because none of us are doing well until all of us are doing well. Our platforms are for service. My brothers and sisters, we're called to serve one another. Yes, sir. In fact, Jesus said, he that is the greatest among you, yes, sir. let him be your servant. Yes, sir. Oh, we're called to be servants on, of one yes. another. Come on. But we're also called to be servants of the Lord. Yes, sir. Do I have a witness here? Yes. And when, yes, we get to the end of life's journey, well, there's only one title that will be given in the yes. end. Yes. Servant of God, well done. Yes. But he'll never say well done until we will do. Aretha Franklin said that her money came from the black community. Yes, sir. And that's why she believed in giving back to black causes. Yes, sir. We've got to find something to believe in. Yes, sir. Good night, y'all. Yes, sir. But number three, remember the sacrifice of your platform. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. In other words, finally, Esther said, if I must die, yeah. I must die yeah. because she realized she found something worth dying for yeah. and when it comes to your platforms there are always principles to be practiced yeah. Dr. Martin Luther King taught us the principle of non-violent protest yeah. 
Do I have a witness here? And when it comes to platform, there's a price to be paid. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. lost his life. Yes, protesting for the rights of the sanitation workers yeah. in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. Because he understood his service to the least of them. Yeah. And when it comes to platforms, there are prayers to be prayed. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. We've got to learn how to call on the God of our ancestors. Yeah. To call on God and get an answer. Yes, Do I have a witness here? Yeah. And often the songs they sung in slavery yes. were songs with a message, yes, a message of freedom. And so when they sung, still away to Jesus. I don't have long to stay here. All they were talking about was an underground railroad. Have I got a witness here? Yeah! And when they saw Father, I stretched my hands to me. No other help I know. By the grace of God, that they had come a mighty long ways. Good night, y'all. But stormy, the road we trod. But by the grace of God, we come a mighty long ways. blessing us tonight. In fact, talking about platform, man, we need to show this more than one time on BBN TV and CFN TV. I think we ought to have some commercials with people that's in business tonight. Give us a one minute or 30 second something. Because if I agree and you agree, that's two thirds of the vote. So we'll meet out in the hall. Anyone that has a business, let's run it all next month, Black History Month. Yes. Let's do that. I'd like to thank you, Dr. Barnett, for bringing me and my friend here, my partner, and I'm turning it over to you. Thank you very much for the invite. Thank you. At this time, Dr. Taylor, I'm in need of your assistance up here. How you doing? I'm going to put you on the program again. I need you to do it for church for me. I want you to sing something. You know what I want to hear about. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Doors of the church are open. Yeah. What a fellowship. What? 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 Yeah, yeah. What?
January 25th year of our Lord, 2019, in special appreciation to Mr. C.W. Whitaker, sponsored by the African American Historic Preservation League of Texas, Dr. A. Ray Barnett, founder and CEO, Reverend Mark A. Proctor, chairman of the board. Thank you. Dr. A.C. Stapleton, it's kind of hard to even call him that. I've been calling him Dr. State for so long. <laughs> to my own pastor. What did he say? Amen. That was a question that was asked before our speaker spoke. Dr. Denny Davis asked the question, why was he here? Well, I'm going to tell you why. You probably don't even remember this. It was about 10 years ago when I was being slayed in the media. All right. We're in the house of prayer. I'm going to tell y'all like it was. I was being slayed in the media. I was told that I was trying to demolish a church in South Dallas, mm -hmm. the great people's missionary Baptist church. There was no part of that that was true. They asked me where was the cemetery. And I told them from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. They put the news media at that time decided to put out that the Reverend A. Ray it was trying to knock down People's Baptist Church. They did not know at that time that I had been singing in People's Baptist Church ever since I was five years old. Wow. What you said? I was going to S. I was there under the late. S.M. Wright under the late Dr. C.C. McNeely. Representing Red Ass Bethel during the Congress. So why would I want to see a place I've been singing in over 40 years? Not, not that. All right. That's what they said. During the midst of all of that, I was at a program. And I talked to, and I went up to you, Dr. Davis, and I said to you, <laughs> I was telling you about what I was going through. He said, oh, you were that one that's on TV. <laughs> you remember saying that to me? You, oh, you were that one <coughs> that was on TV. <laughs> what you